Hi, this is Kyle Rudolph, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Another fabulous show about to begin. Fabulous. And, and important. As, you know, look, some of these... Well pronounced. Thank, well pronounced, Jason. Thank you. Important. Uh, yeah, today's show is very, very important. As far as the off-season, the elongated preseason shows go, I would say this is up near the top, near the pinnacle. I, I don't disagree. We're going to go over all the coaching changes from this past off-season, and we've seen the impact. That one change at the top, either in the offensive coordinator position or... Recently in the head coaching position, Chicago with Matt Nagy. Two years ago, Sean McVay. It makes a humongous difference. You see players that were completely fantasy irrelevant. You remember the offseason of what happened to Todd Gurley. Is he another Trent Richardson? Those words came out of people's mouths. Now, it, look, McVay gets a lot of credit, and, and of course, rightly so. If Jeff Fisher just leaves that Rams team, mm-hmm. And they are uncoached. They're just there's nobody there. There's no head coach. Just how that. far between Fisher's Rams and McVay's Rams <laughs> do they actually end up? Right in the middle. <laughs> so what you're saying is if you're a prospective head coach candidate, you want to look at a place I don't know, like Zach Taylor going into Cincinnati. Yes. With the um the shadow of Marvin Lewis and yes. all those years there. Because the disparity, how good you look. Like for example, Steve Wilkes in Arizona, he had to replace Bruce Arians. Yeah, it didn't go well. Didn't go well because the gap, I mean, you only went backwards. Well, you yeah, replaced they, went, the they great, went very backwards. Three you, wins. Uh, you replaced the, a, ba- a few good coach. 2000 or something like that. Who just got another job. So we're going to talk through all of them on the show today and break down how we see things playing out for 2019, what it will mean for some of the players on each of these rosters. And you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Oh, do it. See, you should. Jason is at Jason FFL. I was, don't do it. I was I was telling Jason he needs to follow me. Oh, no, never going to happen. You're verified now, so that's good. It's me, for sure. At Andy Holloway, you can follow me. The website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We'll be updating a lot of stuff this offseason, getting new rankings up there, and uh, that's where you can find the ultimate draft kit. You can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts. You can Listen ad-free on Stitcher Premium. You can listen on Spotify, our iHeartRadio, or you can watch it. That's really the best way to do it. Certainly. And uh, that is YouTube.com slash TheFantasyFootballers. Subscribe, click the bell. You'll know when new live streams, things are happening. We're always here. We're a year-round fantasy football podcast getting you ready. If you missed the last episode and you're a commissioner, I encourage you to go back and listen. There were five commissioner tips at the end of that show. Got a lot of great feedback on them. Part of our job here is to help you have a better league so you enjoy fantasy football more. Yes. And That's why we got into this. And to give you hot musical drops, Jason, how just inflamed. <laughs> inflamed, of were course. Were your mentions after the, oh, the, the beatboxing beat went special? live? Yeah. I mean, I had like two people that were like... <laughs> Yes, the beatboxing was great. So I was you normally, pretty lit. I mean, pretty lit. P- pretty lit. You, you I don't know if you I want was? your. I don't know if you want your your mentions inflamed or not. I just don't know. You need that's because cr- you don't know anything you need about a prescription social media for that, don't you? No, that's engorged. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, no, it's not. Uh, All right, quick question of the day. Call a doctor, Mike. I've got a bulging <laughs> disc on my. No, <laughs> on my Twitter timeline. <laughs> Brooks, uh, if you need to leave, I understand. All right. Okay. Thank you. If you, there's a door real close to you, if you just need to take off one day, I get it. All right. Post combine, quick question: Who is the 101 right now in a dynasty rookie draft? No, the draft hasn't happened. The NFL teams haven't selected anybody. But Mike, you mentioned on the show. Tuesday that you thought maybe the first three or four picks were going to be wide outs. Yeah. Who do you think the number one pick is? As of right now, to me, it's Nikhil Harry. And 
Uh, we, I think that surprises people. We we talked about Metcalf uh, on the Combine show because he was the big story, uh, a man who's literally there. All his body is made out of, of muscles. He has actually no skeleton frame. Just muscle. His skeleton is made out of more muscles. They're that, making new textbooks based on this person. This is how strong he is. He ran a four three three, except he his agility drills were close to catastrophic for especially compared to the the forty that he just ran. His production profile is down. He's actually a pretty raw receiver. He's still going to go very high in the first round. Nikhil Harry is if Metcalf weren't around, Nikhil Harry would be the talk of the combine to me, and I, I think he'll end up at a, at a good spot and is a little bit more well-rounded wide receiver at this point, so I would take him with the first pick. But this this rookie class is very interesting because I feel like the last few years, you knew who the first pick was. It didn't matter what it's going to You knew it was going to be Saquon Barkley. You knew a couple years ago it's going to be Zeke. It doesn't matter where he goes. You knew it was going to be Leonard Fournette too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you it knew was, it was. You, I would say it was. It was pretty much assumed it was going to be him. You but, always knew what the top tier was. This but is this a year. year it, I, we need to see how things shake after out. the NFL draft. It could literally be one of six or seven different people yes. that, that they fall into the right spot and they look best. I'm with Mike. I actually like Nikhil Harry the most. Um, he would be my 101. I think he is a good enough route runner, so great yards after the catch. He can go deep. He can box people out. He looks like a red zone, uh, perfect body type and target on those contested catches. So since we don't know where they're going, I'm going to lean Nikhil. And it's it's so ironic because Nikhil's my guy. Yes. But I think DK Metcalf will go ahead of him in dynasty drafts because I think he'll be drafted uh, fairly, you know, probably 10 or 15 picks ahead of Nikhil Harry. In and the NFL draft? I think so. Yeah, I, I, think I, so. I wouldn't disagree. And, and based on that fact alone, I think uh, between combine hype and being higher, uh, the higher drafted wide receiver, I think that'll be enough to get him to that one-on-one spot. But we will see. Uh, you know, you put Nikhil in the right place or Hakeem Butler or another one of these wide receivers and, and things change pretty quick. So big-time news. All right, we ran the ultimate draft kit pre-sale giveaway. And that ended on March 1st. Now, you can still pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit. In fact, you still get pre-order bonuses Bonus. by ordering the Ultimate Draft Kit, including bonuses on shopballers.com and fantasychamps.com. And it's still the lowest possible price. And you can get that at ultimatedraftkit.com. What is over with was your chance to pre-order and enter to win the very first Listener League spot. Uh, we also gave away two jerseys from fantasychamps.com. And we gave away a studio tour and sit in on the show. And I have those winners for you. You guys ready for this? I can't wait to find out. The Jersey winners, David. Oh, man, Jason, why don't you handle this one? <laughs> oh, David Merikovitz. Thank you. Thanks, Borat. He, became, he went from <laughs> what happened? at the beginning of the name, Nailed he was it. American. And then at the end of the name, he, he was, was certainly not. All right. And then you have uh, Michael Bailey won another one of the jerseys. And the studio tour, Oscar Flores, congratulations. Congratulations. And the big winner, the Listener League, first entry, although all three of us are in it. Uh, hey, fourth if entry. The fourth if you're, entry. If you're listening right now, I just want you to know, I hope it's you listening at home right now. I hope you're the winner right uh, now. Get excited. It is. It could be you. It, John Kinzer. John Kinzer, congratulations. congratulations, John. Welcome in. Now, we will let you know a little bit later in the off season. When we will open up the uh, entry the spot, the fifth spot, and uh, through through twelve, and you guys can send in different stuff every through year. Fourteen, it's a fourteen teamer. That, that's what I meant. Through fourteen, the way we open it to twelve, and then eventually we'll get thirteen and fourteen. I I follow you. I'm with you. Okay, all right. You, you've confused me. That's that's really what you've done there. Uh, but we will let you know how you can enter to win. Congrats to John and every other winner. Pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Very excited. Working on the app, working on custom scoring, and all the great stuff you know and love from the Ultimate Draft Kit will be in it. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Now, I mean, the headline news, again, we won another flag football game. 
Who that they call that's, that a winning streak? That's two games in a row. Okay, uh, I want to say extremely impressive. I believe I, I came to the sideline after the game, and Jason's wife was able to come and watch watch Jason uh, play, and she said to me, and I quote, "You didn't suck." So and my wife felt, is very kind. That felt real good. That felt mm. real good. And I did no look pass to Jason. Did he tell you this? Total I, Pat I did not. Mahomes. He Mahomes did. He Mahomes did. I and got Jason th- caught it, went into the end zone, and then did a full-on jet plane, arms out, sailing jet plane. I kind of I, – I flew right through the, the other guys on the other team, and the referee said excessive – Celebration. Celebration. Yeah. You got flagged? No, he didn't flag it, oh. but he just said that's excessive. And I said – it was necessary. That's ex- flying like an airplane is excessive. I flew for a long time, Mike. <laughs> for a really <laughs> was, long time. I was circling this the, was a, the other team. This was an overseas flight. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> was a- <laughs> it was first class, my man. I told the referee to let him off the hook because he's 36 years old. Yeah. So the, the funny part about it is, is my boy had football practice yesterday, and he busted off a, a huge touchdown run. He also turned into the airplane. Nice. So, did he really? All right. I wonder where he gets it from. Oh, yeah, I guess we'll me. talk some. <laughs> hey, so that was for an extra point. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, how many points did we win by? One. Hmm. Nice. Hmm. nice. That extra point hmm. that you scored. Yeah. All right. Antonio Brown, the sweepstakes. They're heating up. It's heating up. Whatever you want to say about Antonio Brown. The Steelers have begun telling teams that it's moving quickly and to give them their best offers. And the report we have as of now is that the Jets and Cardinals are out, and it could be wrapped up as soon as Friday. In no, fact, by the time you're listening to this, more it, than it's likely. probably done. It's probably and, done. But and the the even newer report is it's it's now a one team race allegedly. That's what's coming out. The Raiders and the Raiders. It sounds. Wait, wait, what's the latest? That it's we're down to a, the one team. What team? The Raiders. Well, it's not being reported. It's that's not even a. I mean, that's not a even wink, a wink, wink. That's not good for the Steelers' compensation. No, a one team or, race, or that you can the, run as slow as you want and win at a run team, a uh, one team race. Those my, are my favorite kind <laughs> of races. <laughs> Look, it's. I think it's more of just that perhaps the deal is essentially done. They're just working out on finalizing a couple things, but huge implications. Seems like he'll be a Raider. Everybody that owns Antonio Brown in a dynasty or keeper league, you're waiting to hear what team it is. And uh, this is huge. This is huge for the Steelers' offense. It, say what you will about uh, blonde mustaches and strange videos and all the peripheral. On the field, Antonio Brown's a difference maker for fantasy football owners. Yes. And so we will have a lot to talk about. If this breaks before, um, you know, or, you know, before this show was released. We'll talk about it on the next show. Yeah, it's we'll break it all down. I mean, the Raiders is it's not my favorite landing spot because I Derek Carr is, eh, but Derek Carr has sustained higher level fantasy wide receivers. If you, yeah, he has. We're, we're just a couple years removed from Michael Crabtree being great for your fantasy and team. Derek Carr being an MVP candidate. Yes. through the beginning of the season, and so, he can hyper target one person. Yes, he can. And Antonio Brown could get hyper target. Yeah, he will request it. He will. Ro- I mean, it. you start to look at the teams with younger quarterbacks, and you just wonder: Do you even want him in the locker room? Do you? Would you want Antonio Brown going into the the New York Jets locker room year two, Sam Darnold? Yep. And saying, yeah, obviously it helps Sam Darnold from a like on the field. You would think it would help him, but you had situations earlier in the career of Tony Romo where you know it's like T.O. every play wants the ball. It's just an interesting decision for GM. Yes, it is. All right. The Chiefs are discussing a record-setting deal with contract year wide receiver Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill earned it. That's what I will say. He did. And uh, how does this make you feel about Tyreek and uh, dynasty implications for Pat Mahomes? I mean, you got to feel great, right? Yeah, he's a top five guy for me. All right. Uh, no thoughts, Jason? <clears throat> no, same. Uh, it's great news for every Kansas City Chief player, their dynasty outlook, all of that. Little bit of news as well about the Colts. Supposedly in strong pursuit of Tyrell Williams. I've seen Tyrell Williams attached to the Raiders as well. Yeah, you, if they get Brown, I don't. I wouldn't think they're going to go after Tyrell. I've, I spoke this into existence. <laughs> I'm gonna hopefully. L- let's do this. Let's predict right here, right now on the show, where we think Antonio Brown's going. And if it's mm. the Raiders, that's fine. You it's, can go with it. I'm going to stick believe with the Raiders. You're going Raiders. Yeah. Jason? I want the Niners. I think the Raiders. I believe it'll be Tennessee. 
Hmm. Nice. I, I think like it'll it. be the Tennessee Titans. Interesting. Yeah. I have not heard that at all. Okay. I've heard a little bit. Yeah. So uh, that was today's news and notes. Look, if you hate your fantasy app, got a solution for you. Download the best one, the best free fantasy app on iOS and Android, the Sleeper app. You get those news reports. You'll find out where Antonio Brown is ASAP. You guys ready to talk about some coaches? Yes. Coaching Carousel. Yeah. Well, the, the nice part about that is there's actually somebody in the room today who I'm sure knows that homage, unlike the uncultured swine who sit before me. You're correct. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about it. Mm -hmm. But I will say it, it, it wasn't quite the beatboxing boxing experience we had yesterday, uh, but that's a good thing. All right, last year. I don't know. I've, I heard a lot of chatter. <laughs> <laughs> for commission tips. <laughs> Seven coaches were on the carousel last year. This year, seven head coaches, once again, making uh, making their way to the top of the ladder. Let's start in Arizona. Let's talk about Cliff Kingsbury. Replaces Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes got a one-year try. Mike McCoy, bad hire. Yeah, bad hire. They fired him midseason. Seems like a big part of Steve Wilkes' undoing. So let's talk a little bit about Cliff Kingsbury. You, you've had this trend in the NFL. Uh, we're going to talk about Zach Taylor in Cincinnati, some of these younger coaches. Maybe they've been quarterback coaches. Maybe they've been in the Sean McVay tree. Cliff Kingsbury comes from college. Uh, it's a surprising uh, hire at first glance. Got fired from his college alma mater and took an offensive coordinator job at USC, which he then quit to get – a head coaching gig in the NFL. Yeah, and some things you need to know about Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, he's a younger coach. He was uh, somebody that coached uh, Pat Mahomes during his time at Texas Tech, so he has experience in, you know, you're going to hear the, the air raid offense a lot. And uh, I'm going to just summarize what you need to know about the air raid offense as fast as I possibly can so you understand. So when we talk about this, for the next five years, as the NFL tries to – uh, perpetuate the collegiate game in the NFL, you understand it a little bit. And really, this came out of the, the most historical example is Mike Leach ran the air raid, and a lot of the coaches underneath him, including Cliff Kingsbury, run the air raid offense. It's, it's long considered an offense in college that doesn't work in the pros, but in recent years, you've seen success from quarterbacks like Baker Mayfield. Case Keenum ran a air raid offense, by the way, uh, Cliff Kingsbury was an assistant coach on that Houston team that Case Keenum ran that offense in. Um, Nick Foles ran an air raid offense and won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago. So it's essentially uh, it, it's an offense that's predicated on passing the ball a ton. Uh, there's a lot of simplicity about it, and a lot of uh, the question marks around running that type of offense in the pros has to do with, hey, in college, you don't have uh, – as many elite athletes that can react as quickly. You put people in a position to run four verticals up the field, and normally somebody finds a way to be open. And another thing that happens in college you might not realize is the hash marks are much farther apart. Right. And so where the ball gets spotted on the left or the right side, there's a lot more room in college. The hash marks are tighter in the NFL, and so there's some question is, can this work in the NFL game? We're seeing teams move to this, to the more exotic, exciting non-smash mouth, pass heavy, coach, uh, rule changes in the NFL lend themselves to protecting the, uh, the quarterback position, right? I, I really want someone to get hired, and they label their offense. So, Coach, explain how do you run things. I run a non-smash mouth. <laughs> That's right. Non-smash mouth offense. As yeah. opposed to Jason with the fedora, which is very – Oh, very smash very mouth. smash mouth. Different kind of smash <laughs> mouth. But. Different kind. I was walking on the side. Yeah, so yeah. This, is, this is good news for fantasy, obviously. It's great news for David Johnson. That's the player that I wanted to bring up. This David Johnson didn't lose anything last year. He looked great on film. He clocked in fast. He was just constantly running right up the middle. He wasn't involved in the screen game nearly enough, especially the first half 
of the season while Mike McCoy was there under Cliff. I think he lost a lot of fans when you say he didn't lose anything. I think he lost a lot sure, of fantasy he, football fans. He certainly lost a lot of fantasy football fans, a lot of belief in the fantasy community, but he didn't lose anything from his skill set, his athleticism yet. He's still only 27 years old, so he should be fine. But under Cliff Kingsbury, since 2004, in his air raid system, the running back receiving game has been really, really important. I've seen some reports saying, oh, you know, here's the the main running back. He wasn't used that much in the passing game. And that's just that's just inaccurate. The sixth most targets, the sixth most receptions, fifth most receiving yards, uh, and sixth most first downs in college in the NCAA under since 2014 under Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, and a lot of why people look at the air raid and they, they worry about it or or maybe you look at his history, his record, right? At Texas Tech, six, seven and six, five and seven, six and seven, five and seven before he was fired. Look. His defense has sucked. Exactly. And that's my point. A lot of times air raid is looked at as, hey, here's a chance for two teams to go up against each other and the game's 70 to 55. You know, it's these high-scoring games. If you put a, a, a person like – Oh, they <laughs> do. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But if you put them in a position where they brought in Vance Joseph in Arizona, the hope is you go up on the offensive side, you improve the defense over what it was last year, put Patrick Peterson, Chandler Jones in a good position. This is the Rams strategy. It is the Rams strategy. Everyone wants to be the Rams and have McVay. It's just hard to replicate. Although you yeah. did see last year big improvements on the offensive side for Matt Nagy, more innovative offenses are coming. Any other things you want to add there? I mean, what if Kyler Murray ends up in Arizona? I mean, that is the the rumored uh If Kyler Murray right ends now. up in Arizona, Kyler Murray specifically for his value, yeah, it would for be, fantasy value. It would be enormous for Kyler. Kyler would be uh, a rock star for fantasy football because Kyler needs a certain system that can utilize his skill set, period. And not every coach in the NFL can do that, but Cliff Kingsbury could. He literally tried to recruit him out of high school uh, into the college ranks, and they're they're uh, they've got a good relationship. So I think that would be huge for Kyler. I don't know that that would be really an improvement for um, the, Larry Fitzgerald for Fitzgerald and the passing weapons or not, but but Kyler would get used the right way. Are there any concerns that you would see a situation where he comes in the offensive line's not? strengthened enough and you have kind of the Lamar Jackson impact on the passing game he's a better passer than Lamar. he is a better passer all right Zach Taylor taking over the Cincinnati Bengals job finally someone replaces Marvin Lewis Zach Taylor the quarterback uh, at University of Nebraska in 2005 and 2006 long coaching history quarterbacks coach in Miami quarterbacks coach in Los Angeles last year uh, comes from the McVay line lineage and the, and the age he's a he's a young lad yeah he's what 36 years old 35 years old he's 30 he'll be 36 in may so uh what are we looking for when you talk about andy dalton assuming he remains the quarterback aj green's return tyler boyd and then joe mixon and his evolution his growth as a as a young fantasy star uh, again, I would lean to the running back as the biggest winner because you've got a guy in Joe Mixon who could catch the ball so well. That was one of his largest strengths coming out of college, who was used a little bit in the passing game, but can be used so much more. Essentially exactly what you saw from Todd Gurley going from the 40 reception count to the 60 reception count when you brought in a more offensive-minded guy, getting your best player the ball in space. Um, I, yeah, so I, I think that it's it's huge news in the positive for Joe Mixon, who's got every chance to be a top 10, top 5 back in fantasy this year. It'll be interesting to see just how much does he take away from his time with Sean McVay. Because if you look at the Rams, they don't have an alpha number one wide receiver. They have an excellent core, and all of those guys are useful. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. I mean, these guys are useful for fa – and Brandon Cooks, of course. But for fantasy purposes, none of them are elite-level wide receiver ones like A.J. Green. So for me, it's hopefully solidifying, solidifying the fact that Tyler Boyd is going to be usable off of his breakout. He's not – I'm not calling Boyd a, a wide receiver one – but they spread the ball out enough that that these other guys, these in, in, these auxiliary guys, pass catchers for the Bengals, they'll be used used 
more than they have in the past. Well, maybe that means something good for John Ross. And I think you kind of had you have yeah, two outcomes be. here in Cincinnati. If there's anything we've learned about that organization is they are willing to be patient. 16 years without a playoff win under Marvin Lewis. Zach Taylor will have time. Now, the the question is whether he can transition Andy Dalton into his future. He's only 31 years old. Or whether they're going to you know, struggle this season, and then you'll look at more of the rebuild, reconfigure. A.J. Green might not be a part of that future. Andy Dalton might not be a part of that future. We'll have to see what happens. Last year, Joe Mixon, one of the more consistent runners over the last 10 games of the season. Zach Taylor, again, can only help, I think, in this situation to have a fresh mind. Um, and Mixon's ability to catch the ball, uh, it, it bodes well. All right, Freddie Kitchens is officially taking over for Hugh Jackson, Greg Williams, that combination last season. Freddie Kitchens took over after week eight as the offensive coordinator in Cleveland. And uh, look, the the match was a good one between Freddie Kitchens and Baker Mayfield. Yeah, it was, it was great. Baker really flourished under that system over the final eight games. Baker's passing attempts actually went down, but his passing yards went up, and he went up a full touchdown a game. Now, again, he's a, he's a rookie, so maybe we're just seeing the natural progression of him as the season goes along, but there was a big shift for the Cleveland Browns offense once Freddie Kitchens took over. Obviously, they they liked what they saw enough to give him the, the head coaching job. They talked with Baker about do we want to bring Freddie Kitchens in and Baker was signed off. Your franchise quarterback was good with it. I think this is is great news for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I, I would expect to see more of the same yeah. of what you saw the second half of last year, which was great. Great for the running backs, great for Baker. Baker's going to take a huge step forward this season going into year two. Uh, I, I think you can, you can like the Browns all the way across the board, even Jarvis Landry. Well, yeah, I mean, I think one of the things you're going to see them do is add to the wide receiver core in a big way. They need help at the yeah. wide receiver position. Uh, I doubt Brashad Perryman's back. He was a bit part player. Antonio Callaway has plenty of the up and down problems, and then so you got Jarvis Landry. And I think they're going to add a big name. I don't know who that'll be. I saw Matt the draft. Harmon. I okay. saw Matt Harmon saying that they needed more smoke in the yep. kitchen for the Baker, Smokey John Brown. Wow! Wow! Okay, more that smoke. Har Wait. Harmon went with that joke? I believe it was him, yes. That's very off so, brand. So, again, 100% Matt Harmon's fault, that joke, is what we're saying. I love it. That's a great joke. That's a great joke. Oh, okay. So, you're giving him credit, and that's why he's in that's, the I mean, ultimate but draft that's, that's a dad joke. Ted Monken was the offensive coordinator in Tampa Bay, takes over as the offensive coordinator under Freddie Kitchens. The last two years in Tampa, third most pass attempts, fourth most pass mm -hmm. attempts. There are questions Give me about them air yards. The air yards, sure. Baker, thumbs up. But does that hurt somebody like Nick Chubb? If the offense becomes more pass attempt heavy, somebody like Kareem Hunt once he comes off the... Uh, uh, I don't think it'll be pass attempt heavy. Uh, like, I, don't, I don't think we'll skew too much. Like I said, his, Baker's attempts went down. I know that Monk and it, they had to throw the ball a lot. I think that's more a... That was a result of... Tampa Bay's defense. Yeah, it was their defense Bad and, position. and their and they didn't, they, personnel they and running back. Run, yeah. Who did they have to run the ball? Now you've got two great running backs on the same roster. Uh, not that, Three, not that, really. Not that the Browns have some great defense. All, All right. right. Anything else you want to add on? Nope. On there? All right, Vic Fangio taking over as the Denver head coach, replacing Vance Joseph. Vance Joseph, now the defensive coordinator in Arizona. Vic Fangio, a long coaching career. He uh, he had a very nice season as the defensive coordinator in San Francisco. Actually, really three really strong years between 2011 and 2013. Uh, and then last year, absolutely dominant as the D.C. in Chicago with Khalil Mack, number one in points against, number one in rushing uh, against the run, and they were uh, number three against you know total yards given up. What does the impact of Vic Fangio taking over in Denver mean for the offense and 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 what is the variable of a new head coach mean for players with low draft capital like philip Lindsay? so for philip Lindsay in particular it's you just have to be on watch you would you have to assume he will get the starting job one he had it last year so they've they do have film on him philip Lindsay had a complete uphill battle through training camp and was able to beat out third round royce freeman so 
theoretically, you would think that he is the guy, but you have to at least have some pause for concern that the like the total workload, the total work share, the timeshare will be split up a little bit heavier in favor of Royce Freeman. So that's that's the biggest concern. What's nice for Denver is with the OC change, I mean it's it's Kyle Shanahan's zone run system. And Kyle Shanahan's system turns schmucks into thousand yard rushers. So you got to feel very bullish about the the Denver Broncos running game. It's got to figure out how how much is Philip Lindsay going to be used? Is he going to be worth that third round pick that he's probably going to cost in fantasy drafts? Yeah, I think that's the question. I mean, I, he's somebody that you're making a bet on. You could either trade him at the value he's established himself on in like a dynasty league, or you buy into the Shanahan system. You buy into the fact that John Elway is absolutely in love with this kid and wants to make both Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman uh, the crux of that offense, throw them the ball out of the backfield, right. both of them. So uh, it just kind of depends on which way you're looking. This will be a defensive team. They got Joe Flacco behind center now as well. Yeah, I, I mean, Wee. look, it's it's weird because usually when you have a head coaching change, they they break the mold. You know, if if, if you had a real players coach – you know, you get more of a of a hard line, man. Right. If you've got a defensive coach, you go offense, offense, defense. You know, this is kind of like they just slightly tried to upgrade. Like, ah, I like this defensive coach. I want someone with a little bit more experience. But there's not much experience on the offensive side of the ball, and I worry that there's not much talent on the offensive side of the ball, specifically behind the center. And that's my worry. <laughs> Wait. My, my worry <laughs> is that the quarterback – Offensive coordinator. You know the combo. running backs are also behind the center, technically. But when you add them with the quarterback, and then is that like what they call them? the the guy that um, shoots the ball out of his butt? Yes, yes, yes. The, <laughs> the center, the guy that yes, that is what My, your son called me yes. after last night's game because so, I am the guy that shoots the ball out of his butt. Yeah, we got in the car after the game, <laughs> and J and my seven year old's asking the positions. <laughs> and uh, I'm the quarterback, and Jason's the guy that shoots the ball at his butt. Yeah. Half so. back, half crack. Oh. Football butt shooter. So, oh, my gosh. So that's just my my, my I like only... it. My 10-year-old, my 10-year-old, instead of saying center, he goes, he's very, you know, correcting the seven-year-old. That's the snapper. That's the snapper, oh. Nathan. The, so fun. the football I mean, butt snapper. Yeah, the butt snapper. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> I'm going to stick with the guy that shoots the balls out of his butt. Um <laughs> That's my position. All right. But my whole point here that I was actually making is that I do have worries for the Broncos' offense as a whole. Well, wait, what? It can't be any worse than last year because of it's the impossible. top. No, I know. But uh, whenever you get a change, you're just excited for change. And I'm saying I don't think the changes are good here, good it, enough to make these pieces really valuable. Emmanuel Sanders staying around helps. As long as he's, if he's healthy. healthy. Sure. That goes for all players. Well, it's just is well. Not all players are coming off of yeah, late they're... in their career Achilles tears. You don't think they're? I mean, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't re, re up him, right? I mean, they wouldn't keep him there. They'd cut him well, if I they didn't believe he was going to be fine, right? They, they believe he's going to be don't pay fine him for no reason, but he's not fine yet, so they can't know. All right, Matt Lafleur is replacing Mike McCarthy in Green Bay. This is the off season of. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess. Change the off season of uh, what has been out with the old in with the new and what has been for the for a long time the the patience ran out right Matt Lafleur by the way thirty nine years old was the offensive coordinator for Tennessee a lot of excuses made for that offense over the last couple of years on the fact that look Marcus Mariota banged up almost constantly well Lafleur's got a little bit of that. Uh McVeigh dust on his shoulders too. He does. He's still he. It's still there, and so he'll take over in Green Bay. Um, Nathaniel Hackett moves over at offensive coordinator. What are they? How does this guy keep getting jobs? I don't know. It's ridiculous. Lafleur, what are you doing? Nathaniel Hackett was the offensive coordinator in the in Jacksonville. Yeah, turned was, Blake Bortles awesome. into the. Number five overall offense, total points. I mean, that's a that, that's his resume, and there's a history there between those two guys too. So, what you know, what are you looking at from Matt Lafleur? Is, is this a season where Aaron Rodgers 
at 35 years old, by the way, just four years younger than Matt LaFleur, is this a season where he's going to be undervalued, underrated, and outperform our expectations because he's wanted to be liberated from the Mike McCarthy play calling. He's wanted to be put in a position where he can, you know, go out and do what he does. From from a projection standpoint, I'm pretty much leaving Aaron Rodgers where he's been. I know there's a lot of changes, but we can't anticipate exactly what those are. I just have to believe he's a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback. His rookie wide receivers will be better. I actually think they're going to bring someone in uh, in free agency at the position as well. So I, you know, I think you have to go status quo. Now, is he a value? He could he could still be a value because he's not going to be the first quarterback taken off the board. So he will inherently drop a little bit from last year. I'm not drafting him because you put way too much capital in a onesie position where you only need one guy. The the thing, this is kind of similar to some of these other teams. The one area where I think there's a huge improvement is the running game. Hackett and LaFleur have consistently had teams that are higher ranked in rushing attempts. They want to get that part of the game going. Green Bay was dead last in rushing attempts last season, lowest in their franchise history. So when it comes to – now, they're going to use a committee. Yeah, they've. he's already talked about and, it's 50-50. Right, and, and, and that's fine because if you – I mean, you, if you look at the split last year, it was a committee last year as well, and now you're going to probably add 100 carries total on the season. So hey, I, 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 think I don't buy like, into – I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I think someone like Aaron Jones is going to be a value this year. And you've mentioned that before, and you could be right. I, I don't necessarily buy into the historical assessment of Nathaniel Hackett and the rushing attempts. The, the teams that he was the offensive coordinator for didn't have Aaron Rodgers or anything close to it. So the necessity of, of avoiding – like you don't bring in a guy to be the new head coach of Aaron Rodgers and turn them into a running football team. No. Aaron Rodgers won't accept that. Sure, but look look at when LaFleur was with the Falcons, when Matt Ryan was having the MVP season, went to the Super Bowl. They were still a very balanced team. Devonta Freeman and Tevin Coleman got a lot of carries. That's more of the model that I see here versus what we saw in Tennessee. Does that concern you at all then for – I mean, you were saying Rodgers is a value, but the reason why Rodgers was not – the fantasy super stud last year came down completely to red zone attempts. And are you concerned that if they get in the red zone, maybe they're going to try and call in some runs a little bit more? I, uh, you know, it, it's hard to say. Uh, the red zone attempt number being low isn't just because they, it's certainly not because they ran the ball in the red zone. It's because they weren't in the red zone as often as usual. So if they can move the ball between the 20s a little bit better, his touchdown number can go up. And, and I don't think Aaron Rodgers is a value in a draft. At all, because okay. I think he's a terrible pick. That's the opposite of a value. But I think he is going to be more of a value than he usually is for those people out there that draft Aaron Rodgers every year. Is that how you shop, too? Like when you're in Target, something's a value? Or like your wife grabs a shirt, she's like, well, it's $25. That's a terrible pick! Yeah, you're darn right. It's worth noting that uh, Matt LaFleur is calling plays. It's not Nathaniel Hackett. It'll be Matt LaFleur calling plays. Uh, was the offensive coordinator in Los Angeles two years ago, Tennessee last year. Uh, number one in points during his uh, his time in Los Angeles with McVay. All right, Brian. Where, where he wasn't calling plays. Where he wasn't calling Correct. plays. Correct. Yes. Uh, Brian Flores replacing Adam Gaze. Mm. Miami has a new head coach. Not a b-hole. Hopefully. He was the... Uh, linebackers coach ahead of 2016 for the Patriots. Yeah, this is a whole, his, this, it's a whole Patriots squad now down in Miami because the, the 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 big news of this is not Flores because he's the defensive mind. It's the new OC Chad O'Shea who was the Patriots wide receiver coach for a, a very long time. And if you research it all for O'Shea, he is at least Julian Edelman gives him the credit of turning Edelman from a cornerback or a quarterback into the wide receiver that he is today. So it's very interesting to see what, what O'Shea is going to do. I really like how he talks about fitting his system to what his players can actually do. So that speaks very much to your not a B-hole 
comment where you have these coaches like, it's my way. If you don't like it, you can get out. You go in, you maximize what your players can do. And just with, with the Patriots system, then that's what he is bringing down. He's talked about that the Patriots passing system. Albert Wilson, very interesting. Very interesting to me as a later round guy if if he, in fact, can become the focal point of this offense. It's funny you mentioned the uh, building an offense around your player's strengths or vice versa because I feel like a lot of the coaches that got fired were ones that failed to yeah. adapt to their player's strengths. Because it's dumb. Well, I mean, the Patrick Peterson on defense in Arizona. Oh, goodness. What Steve Wilkes did. This is my system. You're going to run it my way. It's going to work. Instead of, hey, let's let's – accentuate the greatest players on our roster. Yep. So um, and hopefully O'Shea can get that done. Okay. So uh, He's uh, just going to need some great players on his <laughs> roster. That that does feel like the problem, right? Like, okay, so our system is we're going to suck. <laughs> Sorry, Dolphins fans. Uh, You're going to get some hate for oh, that. I know. But I know. Uh, the fact that Albert Wilson, who flashed last year, yeah, Wilson's but, but also was player. severely hurt, um, got himself hurt, and uh, he is a good player. Well, he ain't enough. And Devontae Parker should be out the door. And we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. Or the running back, Kalen Balazs, Kenyon, Kenyon Drake. Drake, somebody else. So there, I, I feel like it is, it's kind of putting the car before the horse to speculate on that offense because they do need to fill a lot of holes on the offensive side of the ball. No more Ryan Tannehill. So... Yeah, I mean, it's going. To, it's probably a transition hey. in Miami. It, it's a little scary Gasicki. in the sense that you're you're taking. Yeah, Mike Mike Gesicki. You're taking multiple. Gronk yeah, Gisky. Oh mm. no, mm. no, no, uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Don't come around on this one. Can we get a ruling from the judge? Gronk Gisicki. You know, the last thing you want to do is associate Gronk with somebody right now. The way that he performed for you. But, you know, Flores has been a long-time linebackers coach. You've got a long-time wide receivers coach, and I realize they got a little bit more experience last year, but this is really like a, I don't know, you know, inexperienced at the top. They're not used to running sure. an organization, and then it's like, okay, you're calling plays, you're crafting everything, you're doing it all, and you don't have the best group of players to do it with. Just seems like a difficult situation to be in for these guys. All right, Adam Gaze. You're still a Got head coach. Another job. You're still a head coach. You, he heads to New York to take over as the head coach of the Jets. Replace Todd Bowles. They go from defensive-minded head coach to offensive-minded head coach. Somebody to come in, and, and by my estimation, this is all about bringing in somebody to mold and form and build Sam Darnold into a next-level quarterback. Yes, if you want to know how good Peyton Manning was, so, you just look at the hiring it's, it's in 2000. So 1819 of Adam Gaze coming in to mold your quarterback because Adam Gaze was really, really good when he had Peyton Manning. He has not had a top 20 offense since he had Peyton Manning. What? 23rd, 17th, 28th, Why are 26. people giving them jobs? I don't know, but here's what I do know. Dowell Loggins, the offensive coordinator who's coming alongside, I, I think Adam Gaze looks really smart next to Dowell Loggins who is terrible everywhere he's gone. I mean, you're talking Tennessee, Chicago, Miami, <clears throat> always been a bottom half offense. It's Look, tough. It's tough in the streets here. I, if you listen to Adam Gaze during his very peculiar press conference, he talks a lot about the fact that, you know, they struggled metrics-wise because huh. they had to do – what they needed to do to win games. Now you can look at as opposed to as opposed to running as many plays or stretching out the offense or putting up more yards. That's the argument he's made is because he did find. Here's the thing that's in his corner. He won more games than I thought he'd win with that yes, roster. One hundred percent. He made I, the playoffs with the the Miami Dolphins and Ryan Tannehill fair. slash uh, uh, who was Tannehill's backup? Brock. Matt Moore. Matt Moore. Oh, the yes, Matt Moore. And yes. so. He won. He found a way to win games. Credit is due there, and if you're a Miami Do uh, uh, or a New York Jets fan, that's good. That that's coming first, right? You, you as a team, you want to win, not just put up what stats. But for fantasy, and that's all I care about. I I worry. You know, he hasn't produced a lot of good offensive metrics. And uh, it, yeah, yeah. It's without Peyton Manning ever. Well, he's talked already about making Quincy Anunwa more of a. Uh, uh, giving him more opportunity, 
in the offense. You've got Robbie Anderson likely to be back. Sam Darnold evolving. He, he flashed last year. And so you do have some optimism with an offensive-minded head coach and a lot of cap room that this offense could improve and take a step forward. And it's interesting because it's kind of like you know, Miami sends Adam Gaze to New York in their division. Brian Flores comes from New England and lands in Miami in the division. Like this rotation of teams competing to be second to the Patriots is very interesting. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Bruce Arians is back. Oh. Bruce. Replaces you got Dirk, us. You rep- sneaky snook. Replaces Dirk Cutter. I'm retiring. You know, as a Cardinal fan who had to endure last season, this really hurts. Yeah. Uh, last Car- season Carson is- Palmer is retiring. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> last season is why he retired. Carson Palmer's coming back. He's the new quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, look, he's got a great situation here. Bruce Arians goes to a team with a ton of weapons. Bruce Arians ton is of a talent. great offensive mind who I believe is going to absolutely get the most out of Jameis Winston. I think he's a better coach than Dirk Cutter all the way across the board, both offensively and as a head coach, as a player's coach. Players really love him. I remember watching the hard knocks and seeing the relationship between Dirk Cutter and Jameis Winston and just going like, yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't look like, you know, we had years in Arizona with Bruce Arians, where you watch the relationship that Bruce has with his players, where he can tell them the hard stuff he needs to tell them, but that's because you know the love is there and the support is there. Uh, Tampa's going to be very happy with Bruce Arians, and I think fantasy players are going to be super happy with Chris Godwin, with Mike Evans, with you know the entire passing attack. Bruce Arians has had a top 15, top 15 passing offense every year since 2009. He and- is... He is- Completely unafraid to uh, take the reins off the talent he has and uh, chuck it up there. Uh, look, I you know he's going to do what he does, and it's been very good for fantasy players, right? Very interested to see who gets this starting running back job. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna matter a lot. Um, whew, yeah, Should OJ Ronald Jones get another opportunity. He uh, might. It's, he it's shouldn't. Gonna, it's gonna be really really tough. Really tough for Ronald Jones to get out there. Did you say he shouldn't? Correct, because I don't think he's good. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not saying, like, the human doesn't 23 deserve a second attempts. chance. 23 attempts in the NFL on a team. Mostly uh, well, look, he's on a got, disaster of an offense. 23 attempts, lock it up. It's he over. Is a, it's over. He's a smaller back similar to uh, Bruce Ellington, right? Or uh, Andre Ellington. Andre. Andre Ellington was very successful with... But Ellington can pass the ball. Exactly. No, and even more and important, the ball. and he can catch the ball. Yeah. He was a great back for that system. I, I don't I don't see that in the skill set of Ronald Jones so far in his career from high school on. Okay. All right, I won't linger. All right, team offensive coordinator changes. I'm going to mention them all. You guys jump in with the most significant, important ones in your mind. Uh, Dirk Cutter taking over the offensive coordinator job was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Now he returns and takes over that job, takes it away from Steve Sarkeesian. Greg Roman, now the new offensive coordinator in Baltimore. Kellen Moore taking over in Dallas. That's a pretty surprising move. Daryl Bevel taking over in Detroit, formerly with the Seahawks. Hey, carry on. And uh, John DiFilippo. <laughs> Jacksonville. Yep. Is taking a shot. Uh, Kevin Stefanski and I just laugh. I laugh because the guy who got fired midseason is taking over for Nathaniel Hackett, who should not have another job. It's just is, it's just rotating. Yes. It's just rotations. It's garbage. Arthur Smith taking over in Tennessee. Kevin O'Connell in Washington. Arthur, <laughs> I've got a plan. Yeah, we'll I see just how it works. Need more time. So I mean, Dirk Ketter is kind of the most interesting one because you know this is a team that had success under him multiple years. Yeah, that's it, great news for. Matt Ryan. Because we've seen inconsistencies when these changes have happened for Matt Ryan. This is a, a change, but it's one where it's not as abrasive. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're they're used to working with each other. Most of the players on this team were there. In fact, I would say, if anything, the team is slightly better as they've upgraded You know, with Sanu and Calvin Ridley, giving them a little bit better passing options. So I like that. The, one of the names I wanted to bring up was Greg Roman. Yep. Greg Roman... Uh, look, he has gotten the most out of his rush out of out of the running game 
year after year after year as an offensive coordinator with San Francisco, yeah, as so an he, offensive he coordinator Cap, with Buffalo. He had Tyrod. And that's the thing is his team rushing attempts were unbelievable because he is good with rushing quarterbacks. And now he's going to a team with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is going to get a lot of work on the ground. I mean, that's no surprise, but he has an offensive coordinator who, and they talked about rebuilding this offense for Lamar Jackson. And I think they brought in a good coach with experience with, you know, rushing quarterbacks, specifically talented rushing quarterbacks that um, uh, they're going to succeed. I, I really think this is a good, a good hire in, in, Agreed. in this situation. You believe, like, you I believe enough like in Lamar forever. Jackson then? Yeah, definitely. For, for the standpoint of his fantasy points and the standpoint of winning games in Baltimore, uh, good hire. I still don't. You know, I, I like Jordan Lastly and, and you know, maybe the passing game can take a step up in year two, but my belief is not strong there at all. Felt like we were waiting last year for that big Lamar Jackson explosion game. We never got it. We never got that Through game. Through the air, you mean? Uh, d just enough fantasy points. I mean, just production-wise. He never really had a he big just, boy game. He never had a 30-plus point game. He, never, he was consistently a, a – Top quarterback 12, so he was a QB1, but he yeah. never exploded. Didn't have the Josh Allen games where no. it was insane. Yeah, I, you know, one of the games where he runs like he always runs, but then throws two touchdowns. It just right. never happened. Uh, Kellen Moore takes over. Uh, Dallas gets back Jason Witten. Dak Prescott gets a chance to, uh, again, this is a, he's a very young offensive coordinator. Replaces Scott Linehan. This is, I mean... Uh, the way that I see it, this is Brian, uh, Byron Lefwich. This is the head coach taking uh, a, a player and saying, I'm going to give you experience, and he's going to get it for a year. And when this whole coaching staff is you know, replaced at the end of next year, uh, Kellen Moore will have had some experience. In the meantime, for 2019, it, I mean, it is really surprising to throw him into the offensive coordinator role. Um, I don't think he'll be doing the play calling. Not so, even thirty years old. Yeah, it's. So I mean, usually I look at stuff like this and I think it's gonna go poorly, but these are the type of moves. I that thought you were gonna say, and I, I always, I, I think that now. <laughs> Kellen Moore is a winner, Jay. I know you like winners. I do like winners. I He's like a people winner. with the last name Moore. I mean, that's two for two. How do you not like this guy? No, I do like Kellen Moore. That's enough. <laughs> Uh, Daryl Bevel, you mentioned uh, what that Establish means. Establish the run. Establish the run. Look, it's comedic, right? But it's not because it wins games. It won games in Seattle last year. Daryl Bevel comes into Detroit, and you you mentioned Carry On Johnson's name. There's an opportunity there for a healthy Carry On Johnson to really take advantage. Well, Bevel of, of wasn't the system. Bevel was Seattle a couple years ago, back when they had. Marshawn Lynch, and he was Minnesota with Peterson. Correct, through 2017. You're right. Yeah. Not last so, season. Uh, but, but last season, um, Brian Schottenheimer yeah, it works. came in and did the same thing. Yes. It's just funny to – we'll see. I, I, I think Carrion's going to get a lot of work. Yeah, when when he was with Seattle. And, and the thing is, is I, I fully see the fact that Carrion will be part of a committee – but he will be a much bigger part, and there's going to be such a large pie of rushing attempts mm. here in Detroit this year. The carry-on will be great. I know they're going to sign someone or draft someone. They're going to bring him in, and people will be afraid. Not this guy. Carry-on will be great. Keep trade cut. Pie, mm. cake, mm -hmm. cookies. Oh, sweet mercy. You know what? I'm keeping the cookies. Yeah, fresh I'm baked, chocolate a, a chip. A fresh baked cookie, and yeah. it's just it's so portable. Like I can just... I can grab and go. Yeah, so I'm, a I'm piece a, of cake. Now, are you a are you a cookies with milk? I don't God. have to, I don't have to have. Well, you milk. don't have. Nobody has to. Well, We're talking better. about living your best life. Would you prefer it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would write. They're I would, rich. Yeah. yeah. I need something to cleanse my I, palate. I agree with Mike. I'm going to keep the cookies. And even though I like really? cake better than pie, pie I think will have more trade value. So I'm going to end up having to cut cake and trade pie. Cakes have the widest range of outcomes. I feel like. Because you can get real, you can get a dry cake, you can get a cake with too much of the cake and too little of the icing. Or bad frosting. Bad, bad frosting. frosting. Yeah. Get out of here, bad but frosting. cake, I mean, like they have warm cakes, they have cold mm -hmm. cakes. Oh, I love cakes. 
I, I mean, don't I get me really wrong. Do. It's more of a keep. Show keep. me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a keep, keep, keep thing. <laughs> no, but but I mean, right? But pies. Well, I guess pumpkin pie is a cold pie. I was thinking of the fruit pies when they're cold. They're oh, not good. Banana cream pie. Uh, do you best. like the fruit pies? I'm not a big fruit pie guy. Lemon meringue. I'll do. I like I, keep, keep, keep. I'll do an apple. You're pie. keep, keep, keep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Pristine deal of the day. Oh, you Saints fans out there, listen to this. Yesterday on pristineauction.com, a Michael Thomas signed New Orleans Saints jersey, a Beckett witnessed authentic autographed jersey, sixty four dollars fifty one cents. Ladies and gentlemen, look, pristine auction. They got hundreds of new things up every single day. Now is the time, people, because the, the the public mind is off of football right now. You're getting great deals. A Michael Thomas signed jersey That's, for sixty four bucks. That is truly insane. When when he read it, I I had not seen that, and my eyes went that. That's crazy. That's a typo or something. And it, this is the part of the show where everyone's listening. They start crying. They start weeping. They're like, "Oh no, <laughs> the episode's over. I'm gonna be so sad." Go check out the Spitballers podcast. We got another <laughs> podcast. It's just having fun. It's more like those cookie questions. Absolutely. I'm no starving. doubt about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hungry as well. Let's go eat, guys. Hey, we'll see you next week, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.